The world's first Zen 5 server? But you say this looks like an empty desk. What? Zen 5, show me. Is he talking about Turin? No, no, I'm not talking about Turin. But I am talking about a Zen 5 server. It's an Azrock AM5 server. See what I did there? I can put a Zen 5 AM5 CPU in it. Because it's Zen 5 and AM5. Together at last. This is the Azrock Rack 2U1G. B650. Oh. Liquid cooling and a half depth 2U rack for AM5 with a triple slot GPU thing and dual redundant 1200 watt power supplies. Sign me up. Okay, I did, and I have, and it's in here. <laughs> When you're just ordering sample quantities and not by the pallet, it comes in a nice box where you get the rails. This video is going to go off the rails, as a matter of fact. An accessory box for mounting. That's your Dynatron. Yeah, Dynatron? Liquid cooler? Yeah, Dynatron. Liquid cooler. Triple 80 millimeter fans. Get your dual redundant 1200 watt power supply cables. Those are thick. And then we have our chassis, which may or may not have been the very one that we saw at Computex. It's a spicy pizza box. Deep dish. Save the box because it's got to go back. To you, AM5. Let's take a look at our rear I.O. It does have a built-in I.O. shield, but that is swappable in case of a future upgrade. Got RS-232 serial, VGA. You got two 10 gigabit type A, two 5 gigabit type A. Out of band management, which is a dedicated real tech NIC. And then you got two Intel I-210s. Is he gonna do it? Is he gonna do it? Not only the world's first Zen 5 server, the most appealing. Look at that magic. This chassis is powered by our B654U2U1G motherboard. So it's got some risers. First, there's this riser, which is PCIe Gen 4x4, and this one, which is a PCIe Gen 5x16. Our M.2 slot from the CPU, that's PCIe Gen 5, but the motherboard also has another... M.2, which is PCIe Gen 4.0 by 4, which comes from the chipset. The motherboard also has four onboard SATA ports, plus a TPM header, plus a USB header. Now, interestingly, this ASRock rack motherboard came installed with an ASRock TPM header. Interesting. It also comes with this little duct, which will help direct airflow over our GPU. Now, for our cooling configuration, it's a total of four 80 millimeter fans, three of which are on our triple 80 millimeter AIO, plus there's another 80 millimeter fan down here that's 80 by 38 millimeters. And of course, our redundant 1200 watt power supplies from Great Wall, 1200 watts. Now, keep in mind the TDP of the CPU is only 170 watts max. This is designed for running big honking GPUs, like a 4090, like a 600 watt 4090. Like, maybe the next generation GPU. It's gonna give you a little bit of headroom, because even 600 plus 200 is still only 800. As I always recommend with the AM5, dual 48 gig DIMMs. This is the sweet spot, 5200 officially supported, no matter if you've got a two or a four slot motherboard. Yeah, this is a weird thing on Intel CPUs, LGA 1700. Apparently, 5600 being officially supported is only on motherboards that only physically have two slots, not physically have four slots, which is weird, I triple confirmed it with system integrators and a bunch of other people. I'm sure that Intel's going to tell me I'm wrong. At least I hope that I would be because that's not how it was pitched. But AMD's pretty consistently said 5200 DDR5. That is exactly precisely what these are. Dual rank too. Now if you're going to run four DIMMs on either platform, DDR5 3600 is all you can hope for as guaranteed speed. Plenty of power if we want to shove a 4090 in here, or an RTX 5880, or an A6000, or a 7900 XTX, whatever we want to put. Initial training is going to take a bit, as it usually does. Postcode 15! 
Now before we deploy our Zen 5 CPU, we're first going to test it with an Epic 4563. Now in case you're wondering about active versus passive peripherals, this is a passive peripheral. See, you can see through the heat sink here, there's no fan. It's relying on this system to do the fan, which is why things like this baffle become very important because it's going to use the 80 millimeter fan to force air through your passive component. If you're running like an A800, an A800 is passive and you will need this. If you're running an RTX 5880, those are active. They have a fan, they have their own fan, and so just having airflow in this general area is going to work. You don't necessarily have to have the baffle. It does help, but it'll survive without it. Whereas this, this will run too hot without a baffle forcing air through this GPU. It can also be important that you've got your slot covers in. If you've got a chassis and you're mixing and matching things around, having the slot covers in certain places can help force air where it needs to go because it is a little bit more work to send air through this thing than just an empty slot cover. So keep that in mind as you experiment. This particular peripheral is a NIC with a built-in GPU. Why does a NIC need a built-in GPU? So you can do AI packet processing at 200 gigabit. This is a fun, fun toy that I'm already doing interesting things with, and uh, but it's gonna have to be a future video. And this is only 300 watts anyway, so we could get away with like 650, 750 watt power supplies if this was all I was running in here. But it's not. Let's take a closer look at the BIOS. So as the time that I'm shooting this, this is gonna be for BIOS version 20.1, which should include the Zen 5 preliminary support. There's probably a newer version by the time you're watching this. Now the Epic 4564P, that's based on Zen 4, but hey, better to test with Zen 4 before moving directly to Zen 5, right? There's an option in the BIOS called Server WHQL Support, Windows Hardware Quality Labs. It's disabled by default, probably for good reason. There's also PCIe ASPM, which is set to auto. You'll want to set that to enabled if you're going to run one of those big honking NVIDIA cards, especially RTX 6000. The platform has a number of sensors that are exposed to the out-of-band management, which is nice to see. Fan RPM sensors, voltage sensors, system processor temperature, etc., etc. Our hottest hotspot right now is only 41 degrees C. The BIOS does have options for resize bar support and SRIOV. Resize bar could be important if you're using this as a fleet of game servers, you're building your own Stadia, uh, you know, uh, virtual, virtual desktops where it's not a virtual machine you're actually remoting into, and this is a workstation. That's a thing people do. ASRock has left both the AMD CBS and PBS menu in BIOS, which is nice. So if you wanted to do some off script stuff, you can, including configurable TDP. CTDB the other way means that you could take a 16 core part like this and basically run it in eco mode. Although you've got liquid cooling, so cooling is not going to be an issue, but you could run it in eco mode if you wanted to. It does have full support for network booting, EFI network booting with, with the i210 NICs, so that's nice to see. There is also a full AMD overclocking menu, so if you wanted to use this as a basis for overclocking, you can, but the board is really not meant to deliver more than about 200 watts to the socket. It doesn't have an overbuilt VRM. It has a nice quality VRM implementation, but not something that's designed to deliver 500 watts to the socket. We do have USB 4 options in BIOS, but this platform doesn't feature any USB Type-C ports, so it's probably just standard BIOS configuration. Looks like our TPM header device was detected correctly and is enabled. <laughs> so for taking Zen 5 for a spin, well, we'll just add another result to our Pharonix Test Suite benchmark results, because why not? Our other results here give you an idea of what the Zen 4 cores are capable of in both a Ryzen desktop configuration as well as AMD's new Epic AM5 configuration. I have to imagine that the Zen 5 Epic CPUs are probably not far behind their desktop counterparts, especially as the desktop users work out the bugs and figure out the firmware issues and everything else. I'm also delighted to see that our dual 48 gig DIMMs are working with error correction support right out of the box. Now that's probably more of a motherboard feature than anything else, but you'd be surprised how rocky support was for that previously. And it was just down to software. The hardware was always there, but it was just a combination of the Linux kernel, BIOS, BIOS settings, hidden BIOS settings. But now out of the box with AM5, with our new Zen 5 CPUs, well, everything is working exactly like it's supposed to. And that is nice to see. And DDR5 5200 indeed confirmed rock solid stable with our Micron memory. So yeah, the ASRock 2U1G-B650 Aqua. 
The Aqua is what you need for the 16 core monster GPU system, but liquid cooling is truly overkill unless you're going for that 16 core high wattage configuration. In our testing, the CPU barely even got warm. This is basically overkill. This is a perfect rack mount short depth solution for deploying up to 16 core AM5 systems for cloud gaming or remote workstation or whatever you want to do. The 1200 watt power supply is overkill. Azrock has built this system to the nines. It is a fantastic system. It is a fantastic platform and truly is the world's first Zen 5 server. Like it really is. Those are Zen 5 cores. If you want to run Minecraft at insanely fast single thread speeds or other game servers, you can. And you can without worrying about running the game, degrading the CPU, which is wild that that's a thing in 2024. See also my other video. Good job, Azrock. Good job, AMD. And nice to see where Zen 5 is going to take us. Zen 5 being the first foray into a totally new design. And they're going to build on it from here with Zen 6 and beyond. Things are looking pretty good for AMD with this configuration, these features and everything else. And I like to see chassis configurations like this because this was unthinkable even just a couple of years ago that you could get something like this and a package like this at PCIe Gen 5 speeds. Now, if I wanted to do something really over the top crazy with Gen 5, I'm gonna need more slots and gonna need more PCIe lanes. I really am gonna have to wait for AMD's Turin, their next generation Epic processor. Well, I mean, actually, their current generation is pretty good, too. I'm Whittle. This is Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums. Woo! Let's build some more of these. I want to see it. All right. I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.